Blade first came to us, I think, I think as a pitch from a director named Ernest Dickerson, who wanted to adapt it. And then I met with the guys from Marvel at the time, it was this fellow Joseph Calamari, and he had mentioned that LL Cool J wanted to play the character, and we started talking about it on that level. And I think David Goyer was, came in on the pitch with Ernest Dickerson, and we started doing a deal for it, and then David went off to write the script, and eventually it grew into this bigger movie. Of the, mostly because of the script David wrote. He wrote a really good first draft. And he kind of got the you know, attempt to, to kind of follow in the footsteps of the first Batman movie. So the first draft convinced us that it should be a larger film. And it kind of sat around with us for a while and we were exploring different actors. And then Wesley Snipes was frustrated with the, the progress on Black Panther, which is another comic book adaptation and development at, at Columbia. And he freed up and and read our script and liked it a lot, and then it kind of went from there. And then Ernest was off doing something else, so we were looking for another director, and it led us to this guy, Steve Norrington, who made this low-budget movie that was very well shot and well-directed in terms of action, and we all thought he was the right guy for the job, and kind of got, Wesley wanted to do kind of a take on, the, on Hong Kong action films and Hong Kong martial arts, and it incorporated well into Blaze Universe. I think that Norrington, maybe his worldview is perhaps a little bit of a comic book view, but it's bigger than life. It's more extreme. The colors are denser. The the, the blacks are darker. The, the the shadows are deeper. Uh, it's he sees you know almost like in scope. Uh, and even though the ap the aspect ratio of a comic book is certainly not scope, it's one three three. I mean they're 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 squares. Uh, Norrington sees very graphically, very visually, and he tells a story visually. You know, I mean, there's a lot of Goyer's explanation in the movie, but what really moves the story along is the visual storytelling. We had ideas about a, a program where Frost would keep people in cold storage for his bloodletting, so a uh, human blood bank, in other words. So we took literally blood bags. Uh, elongated them, put people inside of them, and uh, gave a concept of initially what would be one body bag as a, as a starter program, inevitably being a factory of, bloody, of, of blood holding body bags, keeping these people in a state of, uh, of, of cool and um, would be able to pull the, you know, actually store and uh, feed off of these people while keeping them alive. It's part of the story point that actually was removed from the picture. How'd you get that scar, Deacon? A born vampire would have the power to regenerate from birth. You must have gotten scarred before you were turned. Isn't that right? Vampires like you aren't a species. You're just infected. A virus, a sexually transmitted... Disease. I'll tell you what we are, sister. We're the top of the fucking food chain. And the blood tide's coming, and after tonight, you people are fucking history. It's a hurricane. An act of God. Anyone caught in its path will instantly be turned. Everyone you've ever known. Everyone you've ever fucking loved. It won't matter who's pure blood and who's not. How are you gonna cure the whole fucking world? Blade's blood is the key. <laughs> We've been trying to kill this guy for years. He turns out to be our salvation. That's the beauty of destiny. If you turn everybody into vampires, whose blood are you going to drink? Come with me. Neat, huh? I can keep him alive for years, producing anywhere from 10 to 15 pints of blood a day. Of course, this is just a pilot program. Once the tide comes, we're going to have to step up production. You're disgusting. Why? Because we live at another species' expense? It's called evolution. Survival of the fittest. You've got an intruder. Beautiful. Endings are really important. Um... If you have a great movie and your last 10 minutes 
aren't so great. I mean, they're, they're really important because it's it's the last impression that people are, you know, that you leave with people. You can have a spectacular movie and uh, fail the audience in the last 10 minutes and completely lose them. On the other hand, you can have a movie that doesn't start out so great, and as long as it ends on a strong note, people will forgive quite a bit. Endings are very important. I, and I don't know why, but but typically they are the most difficult thing to write. They're the most difficult thing to film. Um, in quite a few of the films I've been involved in, there have been multiple endings. Uh, part of the reason is you never know what you're going to get when you make a movie. You never know uh, which performances are going to pop. Things that, that work really well on the written page just end up working horribly, you know, on screen and, and, and vice versa. You, you have no idea. And so you, you, you can think a scene will play, you know, excellently. And when it's cut together, it's just flat and dead as a dog. And Conversely, you could be really worried about a sequence uh, in script form, and then it ends up being brilliant, and it turns out not to be a problem at all. And and it's it's always there's always a sense of discovery when you watch a film for the first time, and and you never know what you're you're going to get. I mean, writing a script is not the same thing as making a movie. It, uh, the script is the blueprint, and it's in it goes through an evolutionary process. In the original script, we have this ending with. Lamagra, Dorf, Stephen Dorf's character, Deacon Frost, would turn into this big. I think originally, actually, he 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 calls forth this big blood monster that would be like a Lovecraftian monster, and then we kind of, before we shot the movie, decided that he himself should turn into Lamagra. But we all kind of thought it's a little cheesy, this big blood thing conceptually, and we saw we saw actually like still animatic shots of it. We never really thought it was that great, but we thought maybe it'll work. So we kind of went into it a little doubtful, and then. Eventually, it just looked like this big jello thing, you know. And once, in the test screenings, once the audience got hooked into Stephen Dorff, the minute he was not Stephen Dorff anymore and became this faceless, gelatinous, you know, gloopy mass, they just checked out of the movie. You know, they sat there patiently and waited for the end, but they just really were into Dorff as a villain. And the minute he was off screen and became this thing they couldn't relate to, it got really silly. So we panicked and scrapped the whole thing and decided to to do a new ending that kept Steven, you know, the, the, the villain, because that's what they really liked. So I think it was a conceptual flaw from the beginning. We always thought it was a little sketchy, but it might work, but we never really addressed it, and then we paid for it in, in production. You're too late, man. The sleeper has awakened. Ah! You want my blood so much? We having fun yet, Blade? I sure hope so, buddy. Because after I'm done with you, I'm gonna fuck the whole human race. I'm not Frost anymore. I'm the plague of darkness. Anyone I touch will be turned. <laughs> Fucking pathetic. What? You see him? 
Can't help you now, Stud. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Said it was Sarah. So happy to see the sunrise. I need to get back to the lab. I'm gonna cure you. It's over. You keep your cure. I've never felt better. Besides, as long as there's a war going on, I still have a job to do. You're back on the clock. We never talk about sequels because it's kind of a jinxy thing to do. And we're never sure. Like, we do just deal with the one movie and trying to make it the best we can. And then if it works, there's a whole bunch of factors about sequels, including whether the guy wants to return and do another movie, the actor, or whatever. So There's no question that New Line and Wesley and... You know, a lot of the people involved hope that Blade will uh, spawn, you know, no pun intended, another New Line film, uh, other sequels or, you know, TV show or who knows what. It, it really didn't affect what we were doing when we were creating the film. Obviously, uh, the big question to me will be, I mean, Blade is a very graphic, violent, dark movie. And the big question to me will be if, if a second film is made, uh, is will it be more user friendly? Will it go the Batman route? I mean, I, I was very disappointed with the, the Batman films. I thought they got successively worse. Um, you know, uh, if if there's going to be a Blade Happy Meal uh, four or five years from now, I think we're in trouble. <laughs>